going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Modeling. We're going to focus on decision making during the Charleston. If you want to optimize your potential to complete a hand, build around multiples. If you don't have a multiple, build around the predominant pattern until a multiple forms. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do this exercise three times. We're going to alternate between dealer and non-dealer. So we'll get 14 tiles, then 13, then 14. And we'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers for each one. We have a couple of jokers, a flower, five, eight in cracks, one, four, eight, nine in dots, six, seven, nine in bams with a pair of sixes and a pair of sevens. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would start here, six, seven. I'd keep the flower, six, seven. We could do consecutive run, five, six, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight, nine. So I'd keep that and that. That gives us two discards. So we have to pick something out of here to give away. I think since we have six, seven, we probably could let the nine bam go. We even have a hand in here with no gaps, six, seven, eight, nine. I wouldn't pick a hand yet though. I would pass these first. Five, seven. Those are both in our range. Five, six, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight, nine. We have one tile to pass. So here, six, seven, five, maybe that can go. Six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, I wouldn't pass like numbers. That's almost as risky as passing a pair, in my opinion. So six, seven, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Five and eight is not too bad, but it's in one suit. This, I think, would be better. Let's let the seven dot go. We have twos and a nine. We have six, seven, eight, nine here. We have six, seven. Maybe we could keep the nine. If we get an eight, we could do pung, pung, kong, kong. And we do have tiles we can pass here. Let's see. I think I would do two, eight in cracks because two, five could be used consecutively and that's more flexible. Two eight is a little more difficult. You have to have only evens to play a two, four, six, eight hand. So I think that's a better pass. We got a flower. So now whatever we do, I would use a flower. So probably the nine will go six, seven. Maybe we could use these as eights. Six, seven, the two can go, maybe even the one. Let's let these go. We got a nine. We're letting that go because we're building around six, seven. I think I would just pass these along. Let's see, right across left, left we're going across. Because we did give a nine bam in there, I think but that was to a different player. 
Okay, now this is a bit interesting. Sevens. We could play like numbers with sevens. There'd be no gaps there if we play the one with all flowers. This maybe we could use as joker bait. If you want to know about that strategy, look for links in the video description. Let's pass 358 since we have a multiple with the 7 now. We don't need to go 6, 7, 8, 9 because then we'd have to throw away 2 pair. Let's pass these 3. A flower. Okay. And we have tiles we can pass. South 3, 9. These are the tiles that went around in the Charleston. So that's where we'll take our optional from. Oh, wow, look, twos, two, four. So probably what I would do here is play like numbers with sevens and six flowers. I'd probably hold on to the pairs for as long as I can, and then in the middle game, discard one and see if we could maybe get a joker exchange there. But these will probably have to go sooner rather than later because we have only one discard. I think that was a good Charleston. And it's a bit of a challenge because we have two jokers. So that's two less tiles that we can use for passing. So with that, I think we did okay. It could have been better. Maybe because this is five discards, but it's five discards with two joker bait. So with this, these pairs, you would just watch the discards if twos go down and nobody wants them, then you'd escalate those as discards. Same thing for the six bams. So you would have to just watch the table to see if there's any interest in these tiles and then hoard flowers and sevens. If, if a white dragon comes through, we could maybe play the dragon hand and then let one of these go. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with pull one. We have a joker, northwest, red and green dragon, singles, 2.157 in cracks, 3.58 in bams, pair of three bams. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would build around the three. And I think I would keep consecutive tiles and little odds. Maybe the dragons. That leaves us with seven, eight, and a wind. I think that's a fine discard. And we have some options here. One, two, three, consecutive run or little odds with or without dragons. The thing about the dragon hand in odds is it has to be the same suit. There's no offsuit dragon hand. If we get threes, we could maybe do like numbers with threes. I would build around the threes. Let's pass these. We got a flower and a four, five. Oh wow, look. Flower, three, four, five, dragon. That's a hand, no gaps. I would focus there. Maybe keep the five dragon. We could do like numbers with fives maybe, but this looks pretty good to me. The only weakness is right here. We need that to be a pair. Let's pass these three. Red, north four. So we have to make a choice. We could do like numbers with fives and dragons, 
or three, four, five dragon. This uses more tiles, seven versus six, just by one tile. But since we have a gap, no five dot, I would lower that in the priority of choices. So let's let that go. Two, six. Okay, well, let's keep that. Two, six. Here's a nine. The red can go. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, three, four, five. This uses our multiples. So I would either let the two go or the six. Since you can't use a two with a nine, I think I would let that go. Green. And we have tiles we can pass. Three, four, five, dragon. No keepers here. Here's two wins. I try not to pass two wins together, but I don't want to pass like numbers. That's almost as bad as passing a pair. So I would rather pass two. We could pass one blind, but I'd rather pass fully and risk it. We have a hand with no gaps. Six, seven. Oh boy, look at that. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's something interesting. We have, if we played three, four, five dragon, we have a pair here. We need another tile here for the second pair. Then we could pung pung. But here, if we play five, six, seven dragon, we have our pairs. We could use this for the seven. We could pung the dragon. We just need help with the flower. So for the optional cross, I think what I would do, maybe keep the, f hmm, three, four, either way we're going to have a pair we wouldn't need. I think I would just pass one, because at least we have flexibility. If we get a four, we could do even four, five, six. Let's just pass one. No keepers. This was a good Charleston. We have a hand, no gaps, a couple different ways, and a discard. If you would have done something differently, write it in the comment section below. We have a joker, north, green, white, singles. Three, five, seven in dots, singles. Five, bam, single. Two, three, four, seven, nine in cracks with a pair of sevens. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? were my tiles, I'd build around the sevens. And I see a pattern of big odds. Five, seven, nine. And I wouldn't pick a hand. With five, seven, nine, there's one hand that uses dragons and it's the same dragon. With our multiple, we would need a red dragon. So I think I'd probably let the dragon go and then probably this three. Now you might think, why not play two, three, four, five? We have six tiles in big odds and we have 
one, two, three, four, five, six tiles in two, three, two through five, two, three, four, five. The reason I would build around big odds is because of the multiple, the seven. I think that if you were to hold two, three, four, five, you might get keepers and be able to play consecutive. But here, we're going to leverage the multiple. So we're going to let this go. You know what? Hold the, hold the phone. We could play like numbers with sevens. Here's like numbers with seven, five. I would hold that. So instead of the three there, I'd do three dot. I think it's six one half dozen the other, which of those to pass. I think I'd pass these. Okay, there's a dragon. That is another multiple. So I would think about like numbers with sevens. Even though we have a gap, no seven ban, we do have a joker. We could use that if we have to. So for passing, I think I would do three, four, eight. I wouldn't keep the eight in this case because we have no sixes. And when you're in mixed suits, you want four numbers in a range around the multiple. So we have no six. So I wouldn't keep that eight. We have a red dragon. I would keep it. And we have tiles we can pass, one of each suit. It's a little risky, two, three, but at least it's in two different suits. Green. Wow, look at that. Green dragon. Okay, now here we have a two. I would consider switching to a year hand, maybe. So I think with these dragons, I would let these go and focus on like numbers or a year hand. So let's pass these three. We got a nine west south. What about, what about a quint? We could maybe play a quint. Dragon, seven, wind. I would let the two go. Focus on sevens, maybe a quint. North, five, nine. You know what we could do? Let's play news concealed. North, south, single, east, west. Maybe pass fully by letting a seven go and focus on winds and dragons. Oh, we got a pair, a pair of ones. If we play a quint, we would have options, but I don't think I would do that. Now, let's see. I think there were wins in the Charleston. I don't think there were dragons, but I think there were wins. What we could do is maybe let go of either the one or the seven. I don't remember ones being in there, and I don't remember sevens being in there either. But I think I would let go of one of these multiples and see if I could maybe get more wins. Because we could play the concealed news hand. One thing I was thinking is maybe we could even let the seven go since we only have one joker. Playing a quint would be a long shot. Let's pass fully and see if we can get wins and switch to wins concealed. Or maybe the all dragon hand, or if we get that two back, maybe even the year hand with dragons. A wind, nice. News concealed, four discards. I would say that was a successful Charleston and we were kind of all over the place, but we ended up after a late or really middle of the Charleston, a mid Charleston switch to Winds and Dragons. And we have four discards. I would say that was a successful Charleston. If you would have done something differently, write pull three and what you would have done with these tiles. When you first get your dealt hand, arrange them 
I like to arrange them in this order, jokers, flowers, winds, dragons, and then the suited tiles in numerical order. Then I look for multiples. If I don't have any multiples, I build around the predominant pattern and pick a category that will use most of my tiles. During the Charleston, if a multiple forms, I reassess and build around the multiple. It really makes decision making so much easier. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a try and let me know how it goes for you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.